Hey, so we're uh, we're back at it again. Um, it's like 10.30 at night. This is my free time that I get during the day because life is busy. But yeah, I got the Mark II squeezed into the garage with the Verosa. I worked a little bit earlier when my kids were taking a nap and I got some some stuff going but then it started raining outside so I called it a, called it a day for then but uh, a little update on the mark II. sorry for the jerky camera in the last video one of the last videos the part two of the two-way differential swap it was all jerky and I apologize that was me because I was you know drunk goggling it but anywho updates are I picked up a factory JZX100 side mount intercooler from UpGarage for like dirt cheap. And I'm trying to make this car, like I said before, I'm trying to make this like a fake car, like a, trying to get a cease and desist order from Toyota. Cause I'm trying to make this 1G look like it came turbo from the factory. So I actually made these brackets today. These didn't come with there, but I'm, I used all like, you know, factory era correct looking brackets. And I think I can get it to mount underneath the stock side over here. I think I got to like pull off one of these clips and put a riv nut in there, but that should all work out fine. Look how boring this engine bay is. It's going to be good though. It's going to be amazing. But yeah, so earlier, yeah, like I said, I got that done, but they started pouring down rain, so I couldn't get it mounted. So I'll probably do that. And then we'll do a little promo. Uh, I recently, on YouTube, people always say like, oh, there's, there's like, there's, there's water rushing in the pipes up there. Um, people always say like, oh yeah, like the guys over at, you know, so-and-so you know, sent me out these things. And I always think, is that a sponsor? Or do they just pay for it and then they're just acting like they got sponsored? I don't know. I paid for this stuff. I'm not, not sponsored by anybody. But anywho, I got with uh, Ace Race Parts. They were selling, or I was looking for some stainless. I like to use stainless piping for everything. And I wanted some like pre-done 90s and whatnot. And I ordered this and it, Look at this quality. This is insane. Like, individually wrapped in bags. And then they've got plastic caps to protect the ends of them. So I got, yeah, two couplers. I got a reducer. Hold on. Oh, no. I've only got one hand. I got a two-inch to two-and-a-half-inch reducer that I'm going to weld in because my hot side outlet of the turbo is two-inch, but all my piping is two-and-a-half, so... This is gonna be minimal couplers. I like to just use four total couplers. I got a 90 in there. So I got that, I got some straights. Ah, I got some straights in the box. But uh, yeah, anywho, I got some stuff from them. Very good company. I was um, like insanely outstandingly surprised with the, the shipping and the quality and the handling of it. So definitely worth the money. Uh, and again, that's what I was, I was gonna take a break. I recently I was talking to some friends, I was gonna take a break from cars because I was like, I don't have time, I'm just, you know, overly stressed trying to get things done and I'm just always have some project ahead of me. But uh, it occurred to me that time is money, right? And so normally I always like make my own pie cuts. So I just take the time and I face all the pipes and I bevel everything. And that takes a crazy amount of time, which I just don't have anymore. And so I was like, well, I can just spend some money and get pre-done pieces that makes fabrication that much faster. Because I can, like, like, so like, like right now, I can TIG weld at night. It doesn't make any noise, it's, it's no big deal. So if I get all my stuff pre-made, I can just take it together and mock it up in the garage and time is money, right? So, anywho, um, yeah, tonight I'm going to try to get this mounted up on the car. And the reason that I've got all the taped bags over the ends is because I want to do this in stages. I want to get it mounted up to the car and be able to drive around to go to work still. And I can just slowly build pieces of pipe, you know, on the weekends and stuff while not disabling my car until the final... Uh, disabling day. But uh, that's a lot of rambling. I'm sure Chica will really enjoy uh, editing this part. But um, yeah, I guess we'll do some unboxing and some cleanup and then I'll do it on the ground and then we'll be up and down, up and down and then we'll go from there. I feel like there was something else. Oh, oh, okay. I'm gonna mount this to something real quick because this is gonna be some uh, 
This is gonna be some some double hands thing. Okay. Okay. Have fun cutting this out, and we'll go to like a snap. And here we are. Again. Um, I have this idea. My thoughts are uh, leave leave it in the comments. Please leave it in the comments what you think. I have an idea where I am trying to cheap out a little bit, but also do a proof of concept for something. 1G FE has six individual coil packs, and it's a map sensor for the like air flow checking, right? Um, but again, pretty basic, normal engine, right? A non-VVTI 1JZ out of like a 90 series or something is the same. Six individual coil packs, map sensor. So it, this thought occurred to me that what if for, because I was going to have some tuning concerns, you know, I was going to, I don't want to buy a $2,000 Link ECU and make a whole harness and stuff. So I got a hold of a patch harness. So give me one second to go get out of the trunk of the Verosa, and we're gonna flash back in here in a second. One second. Okay, I'm back. Uh, a friend of mine had, had this in his trunk. I was trying to get a help start helping this car, and I was like, what is that? And he was like, oh, I just came with the car. This is a patch harness for a 90 series ECU. So by dollars, it looks like one, right? Could be 100 series, could be 90 series. I, I think it's 90 series. But yeah, patch harness so that you can like splice in an E-manage or AFC or something, right? So I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. So I, I, I picked this up from him, just because that's how I am. And then I was like, well, I need to find a 90 series ECU. So I asked around, someone said UpGarage had one. And so then UpGarage, I went over there, the, 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 the local one, and I was blown away to find out that they actually had one. I'm not gonna look at that because it's in my house. But I managed to pick up a 90 series Mark II factory manual ECU for one day turbo non vti So I got a patch harness, and then I got a real ECU. I didn't want to chop this body harness, so I managed to pick up another 1G ECU that I'm going to gut. So I'm going to make an adapter patch harness that goes plug in 1G, crisscrosses over for the, you know, uh, respective wires onto the 1G ECU, and that way I can just change out map sensor under the hood. I think the fire order is the same, but I'll make sure that the injector, all the coal packs work, the injectors work, and I'm going to make this 1G FE turbo run off of a 1J ECU. I know it sounds stupid, it's not gonna be perfect, but if it works, then I can buy plug and play ECUs, Power FC, Link, any of the ones that are plug and play for a 90 series, tune it accordingly, and boom, I haven't had to modify a single piece of wiring on the car or the ECU or anything, and it saves me the nightmare of running all the wires. But yeah, I imagine that my tachometer still work, all my things will still work, it'll just be tricking it to run off a different brain. So long-winded outrageous you know idea but if you think that that won't work let me know and you're probably right and it's okay because i don't have a whole lot of money in this stuff but it is fun to try and if it works great and if it doesn't then i'll figure it out later but um anywho enough rambling maybe this will be like a nine part video because i just well i won't stop talking um so yeah let's uh let me get some gloves on because i've already gotten dirty touching that harness and then let's lay on the ground and let's try to get that thing mounted up. I have to find out where the clip is. And thanks for tuning in to uh, Late Night with Jace because this is all I can do now. Anyway, my head looks so big and shiny. There it is. It smells like beetle juice. Um, okay, let me get some gloves and we'll come back. Okay, so, oh, sorry for the jerky camera. So here we are underneath the car. Um, I don't know if this, I, don't, I asked around, but everyone that has a 100 series already has a front mount intercooler and no one has a stock mount. So I was trying to find out how it actually mounts. And best I can figure is that this bolt hole is where one of the mounts would go. And then I'm gonna modify this hole right there with a nut cert so that I could bolt the intercooler up. And that's what we're gonna do. I think this is just for a little bracket. I'm just gonna pinch that, push it up, redrill it, pull a nut cert into it. And that way everything is easy, nice 10 mils. So yeah, I know this is a terrible angle, it makes no sense. Are those pincos? Oh, that's a good looking tire. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing, so I'll probably just pinch that and then I'll film this from the top as I drill it and I'll do the nut cert and everything. I think I got room for it. So anyway, yeah, catch up with you in a second. Oh, is that a Cusco sway bar? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was talking about um, in the two-way video that I was gonna get all my front end done, and I did. These are my KTS coilovers that work good, and then those are brand new upper arms, and then I got the good tension rods on here, and I've got the 
Cusco sway bar and stuff. So yeah, this is all coming together. I do have a radiator I still need to put in here, but we'll get that pretty soon. Anywho, okay. Okay, I've got a drill. I have safety glasses. You'll, ne you'll never see me without safety glasses on when it comes to drilling. That's just how I am. Um, I'm not gonna film the drilling of this. Although I could, but nothing, there's nothing stopping me. Okay. I did it, no time lapse. Um, see, what sucks though, what sucks is that it's nighttime and I can't turn my shop back on without waking up my kids upstairs. So I have to like use my little dainty little brush and try to clean this mess up because I hate leaving metal shavings and stuff because it's just literally it'll rust in my garage overnight. Tomorrow morning, if I leave those there, they'll be rust. So I'll have to get that cleaned up. But um, yeah, then let's do that. Okay, camera did a weird thing. If I haven't talked about it before, I feel like I've talked about this before because I'm really repetitive and that's, I'm always in loops. If you don't already have a riv nut puller, I've already got it set up, so that's why it's all cockeyed. Go buy one. That is like 40 bucks on Amazon or whatever. And it came with, I got all organized a week or two ago down here. Ta -da. It came with like every M6810, you know, all, every all the little attachments and the, uh, what's the word for the thing? Arbor, like I guess it'd be, I guess it'd be an arbor. Uh, all the little odds and end attachments and set. And I bought one of like an extra riv nut pack online. Again, I'm on like 50 bucks in this kit, and it just makes cars and projects so much cleaner. I mean, because you're not using trying to reach up and put a little nut and lock washer on stuff, and it's just you're not doing that anymore. Um, I used to work on airplanes for part of my job. And on some of them, you literally would have to, I would like super glue microscopic nuts to my finger to reach up underneath the bulkhead and get on that. And like, why wouldn't that have a nut plate? That's insane, right? Um, so I'm big on rib nuts. I said, I'm going to put one in here. I got one of the intercooler and it's just less pieces. It's easier to track. It's easier all around. It makes it look more factory. So yeah, go buy one of those, make your builds not look like crap. So, I mean, again, I'm one to talk, right? But uh, anyway, yeah, let's crawl under there. I'm gonna slam that in, and then we're gonna put this intercooler up because I got some hardware. I'm so boned myself. I've got this, I have like, I had a huge bolt bin, but I had to throw away a lot of it when I left Utah because I can't bring like 90 pounds of old bolts with me. Um, so I've got like specialty bolts, bolts, and then like screws, right? Um, I recently, Took apart and killed my progress. I didn't film any of it. Uh, I got some. I got some pictures. Like I'll do. I'll do a little montage. One of these videos of the demise of it, and it was really sad. But I parted out that whole car and I kept like every single factory bolt off of it. So at my job, I have a little storage locker thing, and I've got a bin of just like perfect anodized looking CAD plated bolts. But they're not here. I've got. <laughs> I've got. Who knows how old, you know, 20 year old junk Nissan bolts I'm putting here, but it'll work and it'll be temporary until I take it apart. But um, yeah, let's, let's get at it. 